Hi, my name's Vince and welcome to a quick video on how I fixed up this original Xbox. The fault on this one was a flashing red and green light. So I'm gonna quickly take you through the journey. If you're interested in longer videos, you can always check out my main channel, which is My Mate Vince. I bought it on eBay for £20 as faulty and it was down as flashing red light. So let me show you what happens when I turn it on here. You will see we have a, a green light, it goes off. Flashing green light, it goes off. And then it will go to a fast flashing red and green. And yet nothing's happening up here. And it's definitely not the display cable because I tried it on this Xbox here which is a working one and the display cable works just fine. And to gain access inside this original Xbox, we need to undo six Torx 20 screws. You'll find four of them underneath the rubber feet and you will find another two of them hidden underneath the two stickers. If you don't want to damage the stickers, you can add a little bit of heat to them and that way you can peel them off without making them look like they've been removed before. Lovely and clean, really is immaculate. And to remove the hard drive and the disk drive, we need to undo two Torx 10 screws and three connectors. When you remove these, be very careful because this will expose the board and also the power supply. If the console has recently been on, there could still be high voltage in the power supply and you could get a fatal shock, so be extremely careful. So I'm just gonna take it outside and I'm gonna use the data vac to get rid of all this dust. Okay, so I've seen something that doesn't look right. So have a look now at this whole area and see if you can see something that looks different than anywhere else. I'll start to zoom in in a few seconds. I just want to give you the opportunity to see if your eyes can spot it or not. It might be hard to see under this light. Let me just tilt it up like here. Now, does it become a bit more obvious? Now is it more obvious? Can you see discoloration around here? And it goes all the way up to here. So we've got a massive section here, haven't we? Which is different than the rest. And that is exactly where the clock capacitor is because the clock capacitor is this one here. Now, if you're not sure what a clock capacitor is, it's a one farad, not microfarad, one farad capacitor. It's like a super capacitor acting like a battery. And when you unplug the Xbox from AC power, it will store the clock details, so your time and date settings for a few hours. Then when you turn it back on, you won't have to re-input those details. A lot of people just remove this because they don't use their original Xbox very often and if they do they can just skip past these details anyway. The problem is if you leave it in there it can cause very bad corrosion where the electrolyte leaks out of the capacitor and damages the traces on the board and it can stop your Xbox from working. In this instance here you can see the amount of electrolyte that is leaked all around the clock capacitor and if this was left it can become corrosive. So now I'm using the Torx 10 bit again and I'm undoing all the screws around the motherboard because I want to take the motherboard out to inspect the damage and also give it a nice good clean with isopropyl alcohol which is 99.9%. .9%. This will be able to clean off the corrosion without causing any damage to the components that are already there because isopropyl alcohol will just evaporate off. See, it might not necessarily be that clock capacitor. Maybe something has leaked on this side of the board here, but I bet it is that. It seems a bit of a coincidence. Well, I can't see any damage on the board at all, but let's remove the clock capacitor because it's no longer going to be working and it has already leaked. <laughs> So 
So we know 100% that the clock capacitor has leaked all its electrolytes out, but luckily it hasn't actually caused any problem to the board at all. When we clean it up with IPA, there's no damage anywhere, there's no signs of corrosion, so it looks like it must have happened relatively recently and no long-term damage has been done. The bad news is that we still don't know what the problem is. So what I'm going to do is put the board back into the case, connect up the power supply, but leave the hard drive and the disk drive out of it. And I'm going to bring it over to the TV and try something with a hairdryer. Just in case it was capacitor related, I'm going to add some heat with the hairdryer just on the capacitors, just to see if it would then possibly come to life. I'll keep turning it on and off while I'm doing this. Here we go, look at the telly. Oh my God, look at the telly. What? So, is it capacitor related? I'm thinking if this is the same as the Xbox One that I did, where on the power supply, the output capacitors had failed. And if it happens on an Xbox One, which is obviously two generations newer than this, then it could be believable that this power supply is failing on the output because on the Xbox One, it would sometimes work for an hour, but then when you start to play a game or something, it would then just turn itself off. So uh, I'm now thinking it's these output capacitors just here. Let's add a little bit of heat just here. Right, let's see if that's done anything. No. Nope. Right, let's add some more heat. There we go. So. Now, maybe that heat's spreading throughout the board and doing something else. Maybe it's not the capacitors. Maybe it could be these kind of switching MOSFETs and stuff along here. But I'm thinking it's going to be the output capacitors. So to unsolder the output capacitors, we do have to take out the power supply. So we need to undo two Torx bits and then you have to wiggle it back a little bit in order to then lift it up out of the case. Be really careful that you don't touch anything underneath until you've measured the capacitor like you see me do in this video because that capacitor can store huge amounts of energy which is enough to shock you. And here we go, so I'm not touching that, just the wires. Let's have a measure of these big caps. So the massive capacitor is here. So let's see if there's anything left in it. No, there's not. I think that is gonna be okay to work on. So now that we have this out safely, I wanna unsolder the four output capacitors. One of them is a thousand microfarad at 16 volts and the other three are 2,200 microfarad at 10 volts. I'm just using my desolder gun to remove these capacitors. If you don't have a gun, you could always use a desolder pump or even solder wick. Solder braid should also be enough to be able to unsolder them. So now through the beauty of editing, we've gone forward a few days after I've ordered up the replacement caps from eBay, soldered them in and the Xbox luckily is now working perfectly again. So really to replace those four caps has cost around about three pounds, a little bit less. So that's not bad at all. And that's for good quality caps. And now every single time it turns on and it comes up straight away. It doesn't do this boot loop thing first. So you can see now the red and the green light has gone. Now to make it perfect, it would be good to change the clock capacitor and also to change the thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU. But as far as the clock capacitor is concerned, all you have to do is press A and you will see it will get rid of that screen there. So it's no real hardship. So all in all, a nice easy fix once I found out what the problem was. Now obviously a flashing red and green light won't always be the output capacitors, but maybe it's something to bear in mind. You could possibly apply a little bit of heat with a hairdryer or heat it up with your heat gun or even a solder iron to see whether or not it comes to life. If it does, it might give you a clue that those capacitors has failed 
just like you've seen in this video here. So there we have it, one fixed Xbox that will hopefully last many years to come. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and stick around for more videos similar to this. Thanks so much for watching.